Okay, this is the second video for sections 4.3 through 4.5. Uh, just doing some problems. We talked about in the first video the five different ways to show two trinos congruent. Um, again, it does not matter which way you use. You just got to have one of those five ways to show these two trinos are congruent. All right, so in this first example, number 11, uh, we are trying to determine whether these two triangles are congruent to each other. So, looking at this, we have um, a bunch of information about the sides. Okay, we got AC, it is congruent to FD, or they're equal at least, they're both equal 8. We have uh, AB equal to um, ED. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, looking at this, we have EB equals 2. We have CF equal to 2. But we don't know what's in the middle here. Um, however, it is the same thing in both segments. So if we call this X, segment FE would be X plus 2. Segment BC would also be X plus 2. And so these two segments are equal to each other. EF equals... BC. So we got three pairs of sides that are congruent. So these two triangles are going to be congruent to each other by side, side, side. And so this is true. Determine whether they're congruent. Yes, they are congruent because we have all three pairs of sides are equal length. Looking at example 12, we kind of have the same thing. I'm not going to go into the full detail, but we got five and five. Those two sides are equal. So that's one pair. These two sides are both 7. That's 2 pair. Now we're looking at segment BF. That's 2. Segment EC is only 1. And they are both sharing this FC. These two sides are not equal. Okay. If, again, if we called this X, BC would be X plus 2. FE would be X plus 1. They're not the same. So these two triangles are not congruent. Or at least we can't say they're congruent because we just don't have enough information. Maybe there's some other information with angles, but we just don't know any of the angles. So we can't say those are congruent to each other. All right. Your favorite and mine, proofs. You're going to see a bunch of them in these sections here. So let's just talk about what you need to do. This proof, it's already halfway worked out. You already got all your statements. Um, so a little bit easier, but you are given, uh, you got a couple pairs of parallel lines. Um, you got those two parallel, you got those two parallel, and uh, that pair of parallel lines are parallel to each other. So with those parallel lines, we really have the one transversal, ZW. So what that means is we've got lots of angles that are going to be equal to each other, these corresponding angles, maybe some uh, interior angles, we'll see. All right, so filling out this proof. The question is, are these two triangles congruent? So like we talked about when we first started doing these proofs, let's just go through looking at the picture, looking at the given information. Let's see if we think that this is going to be true or not. All right, we got some parallel lines. We also have um, WX. This segment was congruent to YZ. So we got one pair of uh, sides congruent. Now I'm looking at these parallel lines. With ZW as a transversal, this angle, uh, VZY, is going to be um, congruent to uh, UXW. Also going to have, uh, with the other parallel lines, VY and UW, that green angle, I'll put two arcs, is going to be congruent to this green angle because of corresponding angles. So, um, it looks like we have an angle side angle setup. This is kind of different because we got um, the proof already worked out. So let's just kind of see if these things match up. We know they're gonna. We know these two triangles are going to be congruent. So let's just see what those statements do. W statement one. WU uh, is parallel to uh, YV. Given information. Angle UWX. UWX, that was this green angle up here, is congruent to angle VYZ. That was this green angle. 
Okay, we said those were congruent because of corresponding angles. Corresponding angles congruent. All right, uh, statement three says x u is parallel to v z, also given. Then we got angle u x w. U x w was or is that blue angle there that was congruent to angle v z y. That was that angle there at vertex z. Those were also congruent because of corresponding angles. All right, then we got segment WX was congruent to segment YZ. That was also given to us. Now, why are these two triangles congruent? We have, we use the red pen to circle the order of things. As we go around the triangles, one pair of angles, a pair of sides, the next pair of angles. That is angle, side, angle. And that's all you need to write. ASA is just a short for angle, side, angle, triangle congruency. That's that proof. All right, let's do one where we're filling out the entire thing. So, again, let's go to the picture first, work it out. Let's see if we think these two triangles are going to be true. We're trying to prove triangle ABD congruent to triangle EBC. So, in the given information, B is the midpoint of AE. A midpoint means it cuts a segment into two equal parts. Uh, B is also the midpoint of segment CD. So C or DB and CB are going to be congruent to each other. So there's two pairs of sides congruent. Do we have anything else? Okay, we really don't know anything about segment AD and segment CE, so we really can't use side, side, side. Uh, we don't know if those lines are parallel, so we really can't use any alternate interior angles but we do have vertical angles. Okay. Those two angles are congruent to each other. So looking at these two triangles, that's a side angle side setup. We have congruent triangles. So now let's just organize things. Okay, statement one is always the given information. It is the midpoint of, I'm going to shorthand this a little bit, AE and CD. Okay, that was given to us. Now, the, again, the, the order of the proofs, the way they usually worked out. You start with your given information. The next couple of statements is, what else do you know from your given information? So, because B is a midpoint, we know certain segments are going to be congruent to each other. We know that A, B, that segment, will be congruent too. And let's keep some corresponding order here. E, B. Okay. Uh, B is the same point in both triangles, so those that should that vertex should match up in each triangle, so we got to keep them in the same order. And we also know for the same reason that CB will be congruent to DB. Okay. The reason here is, well, we were told B is the midpoint, so what that means is definition of the midpoint. All right. Statement three. Now, statement two is what we knew directly from our given information. We're also given the picture. In the picture, we knew we had vertical angles. So we can make that statement. Angle. And we can't use angle B because there's lots of angles there. So we've got to be a little bit more specific. Angle A, B, D is congruent to angle uh, A corresponding with E. So angle E, B, C vertical angles is why those are congruent. All right, so when you're doing these proofs, you have to have all of your statements. If we're going to say that these two triangles are congruent because of side angle side, you need to have those statements that you have the two pairs of sides congruent and the pair of angles congruent to each other. So we have that in statement two. We got the two pairs of sides. Statement three, we got that angle that is between those two pairs of sides. And so we've got all of our statements. We can just go to number four, which is what we are trying to prove. Triangle A, B, D, congruent to triangle E, B, C. And our reason for this is side, angle, side. 
that's how most of these proofs are going to work. Some are going to be a little bit more difficult. Some of them are going to be very similar to this, but this is the idea of how they work. All right, that is it. Have a good evening. I'll see you in class tomorrow, everybody.